Hey Ava, how's it going? I'm good, how are you? Uh, I'm good. Well, I've been better. Okay, so what's up? So last week was really good. We talked about Genesis and through the prophecy and how the Messiah came to the world to save us from sin, to save me from sin. Mm -hmm. But I just don't understand why. Well, it's perfectly okay to not understand everything at once and to have questions. So just tell me what exactly is on your mind. Ava, I'm not like you. I'm messed up. I get put in tough situations, and then I choose the wrong thing. And praying is the last thing in my mind. And why would God send his son to save me when I'm so messed up? So, what you're saying actually reminds me of one of my favorite chapters in the Bible. Okay, I'm listening. Let's pray first. Okay. Dear God, thank you so much that Jackson and I have the opportunity to read your word today. Please bless our hearts and minds as we study and give us wisdom and understanding. In your name we pray, amen. So, I actually have a few stories to tell you. They're from the book of Luke, chapter 15. The first story is about a lost sheep. East of the river Jordan, where Christ lived and preached during his time on earth, there was a lot of land that was good for keeping sheep. However, it was very common for sheep to wander and become lost between the gorges and over the hills. Knowing this, Jesus made a statement to the people who he was preaching to. He said to the people that if a good shepherd has 100 sheep and one of them gets lost, he will leave the 99 other sheep and go to search for the one that is lost until he finds it. And that when he finds the sheep, he will joyfully carry it home, where he will celebrate a great victory. Okay, so that's a good story and all, but how does that apply to me? Well, maybe this next story will make more sense. As Jesus continued to preach, he told a story about a poor woman. He sets the scene by introducing a woman who had a valuable piece of silver, but accidentally lost it in her home. At this time in the East, poor homes usually consisted of one room that was very dark and rarely swept. So it would have been a tragedy to lose something as valuable as a silver coin in a place so dark and dirty. Jesus said that when the woman lost the coin in her home, she would light a candle and search diligently until it was found. She would then rejoice in her accomplishment. All right, again, cool story. But how does this apply to me? All right, there's just one more story that Jesus tells us in Luke 15. It's a story about a family, a father and two sons. All three lived together and worked together. Eventually, the younger son grew tired of living at home. He was fed up with having to listen to his father and doing what he was told to do. He wanted to leave behind the restraints of his family and venture out into a world he hadn't seen much of. However, he didn't have the money to survive on his own. So one day, the younger son asked his father to give him his inheritance, the money that he would generally receive after his father's death. This was a sign of great disrespect, but his father granted his request because he loved his son. The son quickly left his father in search of new experiences. He traveled to a faraway country where he didn't have to worry about his family anymore. Even though the son thought that this was great, he no longer had a father to advise him or to help him see right from wrong. The son had no idea that his father faithfully awaited his arrival back home. Every day, the father glanced at the road, longing for his beloved son to return to him. But as the son began his new life, he decided to surround himself with bad influences. He made friends with men who urged him to make bad decisions. He rooted himself deeper and deeper into a sinful lifestyle. His innocence was quickly lost. His morality, aspirations, and joy were quickly destroyed by his new life. After the son had spent a considerable amount of time living in corruption, he ran out of money, just as a famine began to sweep through the land. 
The people that he thought were his friends left him once they saw that his money was all spent. After believing that he had it all, the son found himself to be alone and lost. As the son wandered, he found a job taking care of pigs, a job that, to a Jew, was dirtier and more degrading than any other. As he sat in the mud, dirty, starving, and alone, he thought back to the home that he had left. His pride began to dissolve as he realized that he had traded a blessed life for a life that bred nothing but emptiness and void. This was the perfect example of a sinner. Unlike the sheep who wandered from the shepherd and the coin that was lost in the dark, the son didn't stray away from his father on accident. He left purposefully. His deliberate decision to leave his father began him on a sinful descent that left him at an all-time low. Um, can we pause for just a second? Yeah, sure, what's up? This story isn't making me feel any better, and I feel like I'm that guy. Well, that's the point, Jackson. The son now longed to return to the place that he had so hastily left. So, he began his journey back home. He imagined how his father would react to seeing him. The son assumed that he would be angry and scoffing at him when he would arrive home with no money and dressed in rags. He imagined that his father may turn him away to the famine-ridden land. Back and forth, his thoughts fought with each other until he decided on a course of action. When he arrived home, he would fall at his father's feet, begging to work as a servant in exchange for a place to stay. As he grew closer and closer, the anxiety in his heart grew deeper and deeper. As he walked over the hill where he knew his house was located, he saw his father looking out over his land. His son had grown and changed and did not look the same. But when the father's eyes fell upon his son, he recognized him immediately. He was filled with an overwhelming joy. This happiness propelled the father forward as he ran towards his son, falling into him and embracing him. As the father felt his son crumble into his embrace and begin to cry, he explained that he had waited each and every day, watching the road, ready to welcome his beloved son back home. The son began to apologize and asked for a servant's job in his father's home. But before he knew it, his father had called for the servants to dress him in beautiful clothes and to prepare a feast in the son's honor. There was no anger in the heart of the father, only joy. The father's heart was overwhelmed with joy and love because his son, although changed, had returned to him and his love. So the father didn't say anything, like at all, about what the son had done wrong? He just welcomed him back? Why? Well, although the father was the one sinned against, he knew that the son who had pursued a course of sin had now repented. His son was now asking for his grace. He came to his father knowing that he was the only one who could supply the love and forgiveness that he needed. So I'm guessing that God is the father in this story and I'm the son. Yes, you're getting it. And Jesus told this story. He did. He told all three. So I'm lost. And God wants me back? Like, no matter what. No matter what. <sighs> what? Still not convinced? I just, I get it. God is willing to take me back, but then what? I'm always that person who's going to make tons of mistakes. I feel as if I'll never be a good Christian. <sighs> hmm. Okay. So, you believe that you have a bad track record. You mess up a lot, you hardly ever read the Bible, you rarely stop to pray. Whoa, okay, I get it. I'm the worst. But why are you bringing it up now? Because every Bible hero we admire had struggles just like you. Really? Who? Well, let's start with Jacob. He lied to his father, stole from his brother, and even fought with God. Moses struggled to speak in front of people and was a wanted murderer. Jonah tried to run from God. Gideon was afraid. Samson fell into temptations again and again. 
Jeremiah thought that he was too young. Abraham thought that he was too old. David murdered innocent people. The Samaritan woman had been divorced many times. The disciples fell asleep when Jesus asked them to pray. Peter denied Christ. Saul murdered Christians. Oh, and Lazarus was dead. Yeah, not even that could stop God. So you don't think God wants you because of your mistakes? If you open up the Bible, you'll find that sinner after sinner was accepted by God and they were used to reach people. You can be one of those people too, Jax. God has amazing plans for you, no matter what bad things you've done in your past. Whoa. Okay. I'm starting to get it now. But one more thing. Yeah? I've never really asked for forgiveness before. So how do you do it? Well, it's actually really easy. God is always waiting for us to come to Him in prayer, and He's always willing to forgive us. All we have to do is ask. Would you want to try that now? Yeah. Dear Jesus, I'm messed up. And last week, I learned that you came to the world to save us from sin. But you came to the world to save me from sin. And even though I'm messed up, you love me and you want me. And so I'm here asking for forgiveness. Lord, I am the lost sheep and I'm that lost coin, and I am the prodigal son. This is me, and I want to come home to you. Amen. Amen. Thanks for praying, Jackson. Yeah. So we've talked a lot about, or we've, we're going through kind of my journey, but I don't, I want to know more about your testimony. Would you be willing to share that next week? Yeah, sure, I'd love to. Okay, cool. Looking forward to it. You know, there's a lot of people out there that don't believe in God for many different reasons. You know, a God that has all the power that He has, how can He, you know, be real? But let me tell you about the God that I believe in, the God that I serve, and the God that I love. And the best the way I can explain him to you is as a God of love is by a story. So there was once a father and he loved to go fishing with his son. Now his son and him, they were great fishermen. They went out all the time. They went out on the ocean. They were good at navigating. They used the stars and they had a phenomenal and great relationship. Well, once his son got older, he went to school and he, he made some new friends and he started wearing different clothes and acting different, had some different language. But the father didn't care, the father loved him. Anyway, so one day his son brought home some friends from school and said, Dad, can we go fishing? And his father, absolutely, let's go fishing. So they went out in the boat and they went out to their usual spot on the water, a big, beautiful reef. And they started fishing, and it was wonderful. They chummed the waters and got some good fish, and they were having and catching quite a bit. Well, there were some waves that came in, and those waves actually caused the sun to slip and fall into the water. Now, the sun knew that when he would got into the water, because they were fishing and because what they had put into the water to draw fish in, that he needed to get out of the water as soon as possible and get back onto the boat for safety. His father had told him this many times. Anyway, today when him and his friends fell in the water, they just started 
laughing and joking with each other and splashing each other. And the father's on the boat, and guys, guys, get in the boat, get in the boat. And they don't, they don't really hear him at first. They don't want to hear him at first. Anyways, his dad finally gets his attention. Get in the boat. I can see there's sharks. And there are sharks circling underneath. And his father can see from on top of the boat. And his son pretty much looks down. I don't see any sharks, Dad. You're lying to us. You're lying to us. No, no, there's sharks. There's actually sharks. He doesn't believe him. The father does not know what to do. Or knows what to do. And does it without even the slightest of hesitation. He takes his knife that he uses to cut line and he stabs both hands and he jumps into the water and swims away from the boat and away from his son. That's it. That's the story. You know, whenever I tell that story, which has not been that many times, in fact, I was told that story um, many times and I've heard the story told to me. I always ask, and I'm sure you're asking the same thing. Well, what happens? Does the dad die? Does the son get on the boat? Well, I can answer one of those for you. And that is, yes, the father did die. But he is alive again, and he is looking for you, and he's looking for me. And looking for all of us but the answer that I don't have is if the son got back on the boat for your story we all have our own stories to walk and that is how you get to answer your own story it's just a gift that God has given to us all you have to do is just climb back on the boat constantly climb on the boat you might fall off multiple multiple times but you climb back on the boat God has already paid the price. He has already taken the sharks away. All to do is get back on the boat. This reminds me of a Bible verse. I'm sure that you guys have all heard of it. It's in John 3, verse 16. And it reads, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Let's pray. Father, what an amazing, amazing, amazing God you are that you would come and die for us sinners just so we can be with you and live forever with you. I pray that we all will take your gift and accept it to our hearts so that we can be, be with you and live with you for eternity. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey guys, so in the pack that you got sent for signing up for junior camp is a decision card. If you want to make a decision for God, take the time and fill this card out. If you're the prodigal son that's returning to the father, or if you're the son that fell off the boat and maybe still playing in the water, if you want to make a decision for God, check this out. We will get resources to you. We'll get the pastor in touch with you. The very last option is the prayer request. Guys, whatever is on your heart that you need prayer for, write it on the back of your card and we will pray for you. We're going to go ahead and sing some songs. Um, take this time to fill out the card for us. Thank you. <laughs>